Well, I'm so excited to be here with you today. And uh, the holiday season has kicked off. Christmas is near. And we're super excited about this new series. We're getting ready to start, um, as a matter of fact, today called Promises Kept. How many of you guys know that Jesus is a promise keeper? Yeah. Amen. This uh, series that we're gonna be um, going into is actually gonna be centered around God's faithfulness in the Christmas story. And uh, beyond being excited about this series, there's so much here that we're gonna uh, just learn about and really just saturate ourselves with in this next month about who Jesus is in this story. This Christmas story that we all hear about, that we all have uh, read about, whatever that looks like, we know this, and that is that God is the center of this Christmas story. And so I'm excited as we open up today, we have an opening passage that will be pretty much our uh, series theme passage. And we're gonna find that in Deuteronomy 7.9. If you have your notes with you, please um, feel free to write down the scriptures. Gonna have some points for you today to take home, to apply into this Christmas season for you. Deuteronomy 7.9 says, Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keeping his commandments. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for this opportunity, God. May you speak today to your church, God. Whether here in person or watching online, Lord, may you present yourselves in such a way, Lord, that God, you would receive the glory and be unified with us. God, we give you room today. Holy Spirit, we invite you to activate your spirit within our hearts, within this room, so that we may receive from you, God, the word that you have, that it would plant within our hearts, grow deeply within us, Lord, and help us remember, God, that we are here because of you. So we thank you, Lord, for your word today, Lord, and we ask you, God, to just speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, this Christmas season is about God keeping his promises. And in reality, Christmas is not the only time that we read about God keeping his promises. God keeps his promise always. God is a faithful God that we can lean on, we can learn from, that we can glean from, and that we can receive power from. Not just during the Christmas season, but throughout the year as we approach God in so many ways that we know he is truly the promise keeper. God's people had waited hundreds of years clinging to promises about salvation, and about God being with his people and righting the wrongs of sin that we all encounter in the history that shows that sin. You see, these promises find their fulfillment only in Jesus himself. And as we speak of many of those promises during our Christmas season, we learn that keeping promises is an aspect of God's character that we see throughout scripture. How hard is it to really keep a promise? And we ask that question, we really think about how life happens. It, 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 it sounds easy, but let's think about what it looks like to really keep a promise. Have you ever been able to keep a full promise without breaking that promise? Some might say yes, some might say no, some might say I don't know. But in the reality, we tell someone to something in that moment, but then what happens is circumstances keep us from fulfilling what we told them. That's not God. God keeps his promises and he shows, that, that, shows us that he's the father that we can trust. I know that I can trust God with the promises he speaks over my life. And I hope that you can do the same. And today is a day that we approach these promises to see that God's promises for you are yes and amen. God's promises for you are, he's gonna fulfill them. That's, be, that's why we call him the promise keeper. You see, today we live in a society that invites us to follow the lives of famous people. Social media actually gives us a glimpse into their lives. Even more so, before social media, you would see it on TV, maybe you would see them out, who knows where, but now we get a real in-depth look at these famous people's lives. As a matter of fact, we get so deep with it sometimes that we actually feel like we almost know them, right? But however, many times when we meet that famous singer, actor, or professional sports player, we might not know what to say. As a matter of fact, we become awestruck in that moment, un un unable to believe that someone we've admired from afar is present with us in that moment. 
Why do I say this for? Why do I talk about famous people? What does it look like to us when we long to maybe see that famous person, that sports player, that actor, whatever that looks like? Well, growing up, I was an avid baseball player, loved to play baseball so much. I mean, I thought it was decent, pretty good. Played all the way from T-ball up into high school and really enjoyed playing it. When I got into high school, um, there was a gentleman that I met, actually started playing football with them first, but this guy was super good at anything he put his hands to. And baseball was one of them. As a matter of fact, he was so good at baseball that it carried him on into college playing for Louisiana State and did an amazing job there that he signed with the, uh, the Blue Jays for a $5 million contract and started playing professional baseball. And I heard about this, I was like, wow, I remember playing baseball with this guy in high school. And I can tell you this, I played first base, he was a shortstop and every time he throw that ball over to me, man, it was a scary moment, let's put it that way. This guy had a cannon on him. Not only was he good at throwing or fielding, but he was good at batting and all that above. And that's why he became a professional baseball player. He went on to play many years, not only for the Blue Jays, but for the, the Red Sox, he played for the Diamondbacks. And then he finished out his season uh, with, the, with the San Francisco Giants. But in that moment, um, in that last season of his, his career playing baseball, uh, he had gotten an injury, so he started playing AAA. And he wound up playing for the AAA Giants team. And I heard that he was gonna be here at the Rawhide Stadium playing. So right away, I was like, I have to go to this game. Not only do I know this guy personally, but man, I wanna go see him. He's famous. I mean, he's a famous Bicellian, you know what I'm saying? Like, I gotta go see him. I was awestruck by it, and I knew that I needed to make it to that game. Well, I go to the game, and sure enough, there he is. He plays the ball game, and I see him off to the side. So I had to go over and meet him, say hello, and greet him. I was in baseball heaven. Not only did I see my buddy, but I got to see someone who played professional sports for many years, did very well at it, and he was very well known in the MLB. You see, in our story today, just like my buddy, there was a man by the name of Simeon in the New Testament who awaited the arrival of the most famous person to ever walk the earth. You see, this man, Simeon, was eager. He was very expectant, and he was excited for this opportunity that he was gonna be presented with. As we read the story right now, I want us to really put on our understanding that in this story, there's something specific that happens that God does, that God is not only doing with this man Simeon right now, but he's doing with us today. Luke chapter 2, 25 through 35, if you follow along with me, says this. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout, He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. But when the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him what was custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people of Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed him and said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will peace your own soul too. Thank God for his word. Our first point today that I wanna point out in this story is God's faithfulness in this exact scripture right here. Now, I don't know about you, but my story points only to God's faithfulness. The only reason I'm right here right now is because of God being faithful. And I can tell you right now, no matter where you're at in life, no matter where you've been in life, God's faithfulness has brought you here to this moment. Whatever you're facing, whatever your your trials are in life, whatever your victories are in life, let me tell you this, God is faithful. You see, we are introduced to this man Simeon with the following promise. 
The promise in verse 26 is he would not see death before he's seen the Lord's Messiah. You know, that's a strong promise if you really think about it. And we got to really ask the question is how long did Simeon wait for this revelation? The promise was revealed to Simeon by the Holy Spirit himself. Just like the Holy Spirit reveals to us today. In these moments, times of darkness, times of light, whatever that looks like, the Holy Spirit has been given to us as a promise for a reason. The promise made to Simeon affirms the reality of the Messiah's coming. The Holy Spirit has promised Simeon that he will see the Messiah in his lifetime. But for Simeon, that time comes when Mary and Joseph present Jesus in the temple as a dedication. First, we learn that Simeon was a righteous and very devout man. He was one that lived his life according to the law of God. We would say that Simeon was a good guy, but his goodness is not what secured his promise. It was God's faithfulness. Second, Simeon was a man that was waiting for the coming Messiah, the consolation of Israel, which is referring to the Messiah who would bring comfort and salvation to the people of Israel, and he would be the light for revelation to the Gentiles. Why? Because this is God's faithfulness. And third, we learn that the Holy Spirit was upon Simeon, the one who was waiting for this long-awaited uh, coming of the Messiah. This is the power that helped Simeon wait and persevere, again, because of God's faithfulness. And this is a powerful picture of God's faithfulness to men, even though we don't deserve it. This promise and the faithfulness wasn't just for Simeon, but for you and for me today. Although this happened over 2,000 years ago, we can clearly declare that that promise still holds for us today. That's what Christmas is all about. Yes, the trees are great, the lights are wonderful, the hot cocoa and the candy canes are marvelous, but nothing is more marvelous than the faithfulness of God. And Simeon was able to see and receive this revelation from God, the importance of what God's faithfulness looked like. As a matter of fact, if we remember our opening scripture in Deuteronomy, what does it say? It says, know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is God, and he's a faithful God, keeping, everybody say keeping, his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. As God does his part, we learn that we have to do our part, right? Number two to think about today is, this is something that's so important. This is, I would believe the nature of Simeon in this moment through his life this is something he had to really hold close to. And I know, and I know that I know this is a hard thing to do, but the power of persistence. Do you have a hard time being persistent sometimes? Maybe persevering? You know, you may uh, be awaiting something for a long time, and what does that feel like to wait for something for a long time? Maybe six months, three months, a year? Now we're getting into it, right? A year, that's a long time to wait for something. But the, real, the, the reality to think about what Simeon and how long he waited for, I can't help but think about his patience and his persistence as he awaits for this fulfillment that God had promised him, that he will see this Messiah. He will see the coming King. He will, he will see what has been promised to him by God. And I don't know where you're at right now in your life, maybe something you've been waiting for, but I believe today God is saying, keep waiting, don't give up. Because when we give up, we're not gonna see the promise fulfilled. Giving up is not an option. I mean, it is, but the option isn't good for us. You see, perseverance and persistence actually within us creates a bond of faithfulness on our end, and it also creates a power within us that we can rely on God. This is giving us room to trust him, to really trust God in these moments. And I believe that's what this point is. It's important that Simeon, that he would see this Messiah in his lifetime because he made sure that he fulfilled this. Imagine if we had that same promise today. What would we do with it? Well, we do, right? We have that promise. That promise is the Messiah came not only for Simeon and for them then, but he came for us now. Yeah. 
that you and I can receive that peace and that understanding that you and I, as we are patient and persistent, hey, look at it this way. Maybe God's promise you a loved one would, be, would, would one day receive him into their lives, right? But you're waiting. You're being patient. Maybe a little impatient sometimes. But you're persistent in it. And let me tell you that that is gonna get us so much further than not being persistent. Simeon knew that. He knew he had an option here. Well, I could believe it and I could be persistent or I could just let it go and who knows, it might happen. But that's not the case for him. And I know sometimes all of us, including myself especially, I can get into a headspace where I really start doubting. I start doubting, God, are you really doing something here? Did you really speak to me, God? Did you really tell me this? Did you promise me this, God? And I have to remind myself that yes, like we said earlier, because his promises are yes and amen. His promises are faithful. Why? Because he's a faithful God. Hebrews 10, 36 tells us this. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, what does it say? You will receive what he has promised. That promise is for you today that we celebrate Christmas, but we celebrate the coming of our King. We celebrate the arrival of the Messiah, Emmanuel of God who's with us for a reason. We have received that promise. Now it's up to us to accept the promise. You see, Simeon was promised that he would see this Messiah in his lifetime. And the only thing Simeon did not know was when. That word when. Well, when, God? When's it gonna happen? When's this gonna take place? Because, man, whew, the clock's ticking. What am I gonna do? Things are just getting really crazy. They're getting really hard. I could just imagine. Simeon, he probably had rough times. I mean, the Bible doesn't say it, but I could just imagine the tough times he went through, waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting, but then boom. God delivered, God showed up. God did what he said he was gonna do. See, we have a promise that one day we will see Jesus face to face. That is our new promise, right? And that's something to get excited about. That's something to really hone into and say, okay, God, all right, Lord, just like Simeon waited for the coming of the Messiah, we are waiting for the coming of Jesus. And we know all glory to him and all honor to him because of it. And until that time, may we continue to walk with him, fulfilling the mission he has called us to complete. This takes trust. Man, trust is a really, really big thing. People can offend us. People can get in our way. People can say things that we don't agree with. People can hurt us in so many different ways that trusting is a hard thing to do. And you know what happens? When we get hurt by those around us, I've noticed that that transfers over to our trust in God. You see, we wind up affecting our relationship with God because of maybe the things we're not trusting him with because someone else hurt us. Well, let me tell you this, the people around us, they're not God. God is God and God is a faithful God. And guess what is God is persistent with us and patient with us. So to us, we should be patient and persistent, trusting him in his faithfulness. That's why our third point today is to trust in God. Simple as that, trust in God. Are you trusting him with anything right now in your life? Maybe yes. Maybe there's something you're having a hard time trusting him with. Maybe it's a word of knowledge. Maybe it's a, a word that was spoken over your life. Maybe it's a wayward child that's out there in the world right now that you know, that you feel, that you've been praying for. Maybe it's a broken relationship in your life that you're just like, when is this gonna be fixed? I'm just tired of dealing with this. I'm tired of being patient. Maybe you're a single parent in this room that just isn't getting a break. In reality, you're trusting God through it. What does that look like for you? How can you stay persistent in that? Well, guess what? God is faithful in that. I promise and guarantee you that. I know that because I know what he's done for me. 
I know what he's done for you. And what he's done is he's been God for you. Well, pastor, yeah, you say that, but you know what? I still haven't seen it. Don't give up. You gotta keep moving. You can't let up. I'm gonna tell you this, this promise is for you right now. We come to celebrate Christmas for a reason. We celebrate the birth of, the, of, our, of our Savior, of, of the Messiah that came 2,000 years ago. And now what do we do? We look to the future and the hope of Jesus Christ who's coming for us, his church. And it's time to wake up, church. It's time to trust him, to be persistent. We have to trust him. Promises and covenants are integral to our understanding of Old Testament and New Testament theology. In the reality, God's announcement of his plan of salvation and blessing to his people, one of the unifying themes integrated, integrating this message and the deeds of the Old Testament and New Testament is God's promises. They begin with the declaration by God. And what this does is it covers God's future plan so God is declaring that promise over your life just as he declared these promises in his word. And guess what happens? The declaration now covers the future that God has for you. The future that you step into because you trust his faithfulness and because you're persistent on your end, being a, a patient and knowing that God's gonna answer because that's where trust comes from. And in reality, trusting God comes down to this. You can't see what he's doing most of the time, but most of the time it's right in front of you. And God's saying to remove the veil. Remove it. Remove the veil over your eyes, the blinders from your eyes, so that you can see what I promised you will be fulfilled, just as he's done for Simeon. It focuses on the gifts and the deeds that God will bestow on a few to benefit the many. Now I want us to think about that for a minute. That God will, let me read that again. That it focuses, this focuses on the gifts and the deeds that God will bestow on the few to benefit the many. Through these promises, the few and the covenants, there had to be trust. Many in the Bible as we read, had to trust God with the information they were given. For instance, Moses. Moses was given the promise that he was going to lead out the children of Israel from Egypt, from slavery into freedom. And man, you talk about a big task. Imagine being tasked with that. To be persistent in that, to be patient in that, <laughs> especially when the people didn't want to go. Oh, we're comfortable, we're gonna stay here. But God delivered. God did what he did. What about Abraham? Abraham was promised that he would have descendants like the stars of the sky and the sand of the seashore. That a son would come. He was put to the test on that, right? And through all that, we saw the promises fulfilled. The descendants came. And what about David? The greatest king to ever live. That through David's line, we would see this coming Messiah come that it would be fulfilled, the promise being fulfilled. Mary and Joseph, let's think about that, right? They encountered the angel that God sent and this angel told them that they would have a son and they would call him Jesus. He would be Emmanuel who would come, that be God with us. And through that promise, all of humanity would be saved. See, there is a pattern here that God is doing. God is showing us that he is faithful and he can be trusted. And just like these individuals here in the Bible who are no more important than you and me to God are trusted with information for us to live out, to trust him through, to be persistent through. Trust is the key thing here. And just like I said earlier, trust is a hard thing to navigate through. It's a hard thing to, to, to do at times. But let me tell you this, it could be done. It could be done. Because of Simeon's trust, we see Simeon in a very powerful and intimate moment with God. Church, I don't know about you, but that's where I wanna be. I wanna be in that powerful, intimate moment with God where I'm standing in God's faithfulness 
because of my trust in him, no matter what comes, no matter what storm blows my way, no matter what news I get, no matter what this world throws at me, I know this for a fact that God is more faithful than those things. And my Bible tells me that God calmed those storms, right? And I don't know about you, but God also said that he would overcome those things in our lives. God said he would deliver us from those things in our lives. But that is what we look to. The powerful and intimate moment with God through his faithfulness and through our patience and persistence with him. See, the providence of God through the Holy Spirit's presence in Simeon's life brings Simeon into the temple as Mary and Joseph present Jesus, this Messiah. There's no indication here that others are present at this moment, but with Simeon's own eyes, he finally sees the promise fulfilled. There he is. There's God in the form of a baby. That baby that came for you and for me, for all mankind, the promise that was there fulfilled, he's seeing it. I could just imagine, and it was no baseball player, it was no famous actor, it was the most famous person to ever be born and put here on this earth. And there is Simeon right there in this moment, enjoying this intimate moment with his creator. Well, what does one do in this moment? Simeon, in this case, takes the Messiah in his arms. Just imagine this. You're holding the Son of God. You're holding God himself. That's a powerful thing. How many of you can say that you held God <laughs> like this? What we can say is because of God's promises, we hold God within here. You see, just as Simeon experienced that opportunity to hold Jesus himself in his arms, holding the almighty God, the creator of the universe, the king that would die for our sins, that would die for Simeon, that would die for his parents, let me tell you this, we hold the same Jesus right here within our hearts. The power that's within us because of God's faithfulness. And he blesses God. Not only does he hold God, but he blesses him. He blesses him with his very mouth, with his very presence, with an intimate opportunity in this moment. And then Simeon utters this powerful Psalm in verse 29 to 32. Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, there it is. As you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. First, Simeon says that he's ready to die since the Lord's promise has been fulfilled. When we look at the term now in the scripture, sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss, now speaks to the truth that the Messiah has come. God's faithfulness has been established once again. Second, Simeon offers praise to God and salvation is now available for all people, both Jews and Gentiles, because the Messiah has come. Again, God's faithfulness. Third, Simeon tells Mary that Jesus will suffer and that she will suffer because of him because this is necessary for the redemption of sin. God's faithfulness. And how does Mary suffer through this? She sees her son go through what he went through for you and me and for her. Not knowing what was to come, Mary endured probably one of the worst things a mother could endure. Seeing her son in that manner of dying for this world, for humanity. And a lot of it of the humanity that denied him. You see, after Simeon speaks these words, his voice goes silent. We hear nothing more from Simeon following his contact with the Messiah. His mission was complete. The task was done. God's faithfulness has arrived again. Because of Simeon's persistence, we see this faithful man of Simeon receive the faithfulness of God. Scripture does not reveal how old Simeon was 
or when he died or how he died. But what the scripture tells us is that Simeon sees the Messiah in his lifetime, which is proof that the Messiah has come to redeem us from our sins and how much he has trusted God, again, through his faithfulness. So what does this teach us today? What do we pull from this? What, what can we apply to our lives out of this word at the beginning of this Christmas season? Number one, God is faithful. Number two, it's the power of persistence in our lives. Look church, we have to be persistent. We have to persevere. We have to be patient because we're gonna be doing some waitings. You can't get around it. You can't ignore it. It happens. But it's how you do it. And how you do it is our third point, is to trust in God. We have to trust him. I promise you, if you trust him, you will see the day break. You will see the light come. You will not grow weary. You will know that he is God in your life. Again, this all goes back to our scripture in Deuteronomy 7, 9. Let's read it again. Now, therefore, that the Lord your God is who? He is God. He is the faithful God keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. It's time for us to keep God's word. Let's hold it close to our hearts. Look, the Christmas season, for some of us, isn't always joyful. It can be hard. It can be very difficult. But there's one thing that I can tell you this is the comfort that you need is resting right there within you. You see, when Jesus left this earth, before he went on, he promised us one of the greatest promises besides salvation. And that was the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that would come, the comforter, the parakletos, the one who would come to live within us, the one who would come to give us the direction that we need to help us in times when needed, even when times get rough and even when times are joyous. It's for us all the time. As a matter of fact, Jesus also made another statement in Acts 1.8, that you receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. That power, man, I just love this word. I could preach about this all day long, but that power, that word power means dunamis. And when you look up that word in the Greek, it means miraculous working power. It's actually where we get our English word for dynamite from. But let's think about this. The dunamis power within you, that is God's faithfulness within you, that will help you stay persistent and persevere in times of need and will give you the trust that you need in God because God lives within you. That's all you need. He did that for us. But you see, as he spoke this over his people and was given to us, that yes, we would receive this dunamis this power. Jesus knew that there was a reason for that because he was leaving this earth. Leaving this earth meant that, hey, we learned about it today that the faithfulness of God was revealed. The Messiah had come. Simeon was a part of this story. I could just imagine being Simeon in this moment. And we don't know if Simeon even saw the Lord's death, but he knew what the Messiah came for. He came to die on a cross for you and me. He came to be faithful. And boy, is he faithful. Look all around this room, faithfulness is here. God's faithfulness rests upon you. And the biggest part of faithfulness today that we could ever talk about is what Jesus did for us that if he didn't come as the Messiah, as this baby, this beautiful, precious baby boy, 
And I could just imagine in that moment as Simeon is blessing God, he's blessing him in this moment, knowing what was to come. He's blessing him for his future that God was gonna use Jesus all the way to this most, the most important time in human history. And that was his death. You see, Jesus came, not only as a baby, but he came and he grew as a man to die for our sins, to give us hope. And that hope still rests with us today. That right now, we can say yes to him and we can receive the fulfillment and the, the fullness of his faithfulness through Jesus. So I wanna ask you this morning, maybe this is your first time visiting, maybe you've been here for a while now. Either way, God is knocking at your heart. He's just saying, let me in. And the Bible teaches us that if we confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord and believe that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. That promise is for you today. And we're talking about promises kept. We're talking about God's faithfulness. And God's faithfulness, as it's in this room, it's here for you. Would you bow your heads with me? I pray that this message has stirred something within your heart, whether you're here in person or you're online. And that is this, that God, he's got you. He's had you from the beginning. And God's inviting you into his space right now. If you're here this morning, you've never given your life over to Jesus, let me tell you, this story was for you story of redemption and reconciliation, the salvation that rests upon our shoulders because of him. So I wanna invite you this morning, if that's you today, you wanna give your life to Jesus and say, yes, God, I'm tired of living the way I have. I wanna live for you. Just raise your hand for me right now. Thank you, Lord. Hands up all over the room. Thank you, Lord. It's giving God that opportunity to say here, here I am, Lord, I need your help. Just keep those hands up. Thank you right over here. Many hands over here. Yes, thank you, Lord. Right here in the front, in the balcony. Thank you, Jesus. We're gonna pray this prayer together. Church, will you help us out? Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for Jesus. Please forgive me, Lord, for all my sins. I believe you died for me. And I believe you rose from the dead. So I invite you, Holy Spirit, to come into my heart. Make me new. You are the Messiah in my life. So here I am, Lord. I'm all yours. I surrender my life to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's give him a hand this morning.